So for me, two, wait, 2012, are you serious? Huh. 2012, so... Yeah. That was a, that 2012 was a movie. Uh, let me see how old I was. Okay, so you were 22? Yep. Okay. So, hold on. Why the hell did it say that? Um, I'm trying to do the math. Um, so, that means that he was... Twenty, you were twenty-two. Right? Yeah, twenty-two now. Um, so, wait a minute, but I'm two years younger than you. But we cross to wait. Yeah, we're you're not exactly two years younger than me. You're, okay, so you're, a year and a half. At, at some point, you become two years younger than me, and at some point, you're one year younger than me. Okay, so I was so during that time, I would have been twenty-one. He would have been twenty-two or whatever um, during that time. So. Um, I was 21 years old, so I was grown. So, you know, for people watching, I wasn't a 16-year-old girl or anything. I was a grown woman. You know, I'm older than 18, 21, age to drink. So, you know, um, at that time, losing my virginity at 21, uh, there's a lot of people who had me beat, uh, who already lost their virginity and stuff. But me, I was a good girl, and I waited till I was... 21 and then um we kind of decided to to do it we got a hotel um and um we basically spent i think it was like a, a night together and yeah, it was nice we had dinner and stuff and you know then we i think it was dinner right or i think it was we yeah, had dinner but, like we normally do i was tripping because i'm like which one of these things do i use i'm sitting here looking at all the different kinds like which one of these things I use? <laughs> so yeah. I just pick one, you know. So we 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 did um, we did you know we both lost our virginity. Um, but it wasn't like that. Well, like we, she had me go to the hospital. Oh, okay. like, get yourself. Checked. But we I'm talking about the day it happened. I'm not talking about the how you were checked and stuff. I'm talking about losing virginity. Well, I mean, at some point, we got to get to the why we're not married part. We will. Oh. We're real people. Oh. All right, go ahead. So, we did lose our virginity, but before that, I did have him go and get tested, STD tested or whatever, um, because the experience that he had with the other girl or whatever. So, um, you know, before I knew him or whatever, uh, because of that, um, me, I hadn't been active with any guys, so I wouldn't have any reason to, you know, have anything. Um, but that girl that was with, I don't know, she might have something. Not saying he would, but, you know, just to be safe. So, um, we did, um, so, I lost my virginity, he lost his virginity. He freaked out when I lost my virginity, basically, when, you know, my hymen broke. He kind of freaked out, um, and stuff, because I was bleeding and stuff, and he, he doesn't, he, with blood and him don't mix, um, and so he didn't like seeing that. And he, he thought he really hurt me and everything because the way, I, you know, I was said ow, you know, and stuff. That's to tell you I really was a virgin because my heart broke um, and stuff. And so um, I was no longer a virgin or whatever. He himself, he wasn't, um, he was a virgin, but, well, after that, he wasn't a virgin either. So we just kind of... Um, both lost our virginity, and then after that, well, you get a sex drive after you lose your virginity. Which so, nobody ever told me that part, because, like I said, I live with just women. And, oh, keep it in the pants, and don't do that, blah, blah, blah. I never knew that that there's this thing called a sex drive. I never knew that. See, so when I tried to do that again, I couldn't anymore. Like I could when I was virgin. I could just not, not masturbate, not do none of that stuff. Yeah. But after that, it was like something activated. And now, I have a buildup where I it's like I get I get to a certain point and I start getting agitated and, and jittery and all type of weird shit and it's like oh I have to release. You have a sex drive. Yeah, sex drive. So like. So, go well, ahead. I, mean, I go think ahead. they know what a sex drive is. Man. Yeah, well, I'm just saying that when you're raised with a bunch of, you know, females and women and stuff, you don't got no guys around. You don't. You hear them say one thing, but in reality, for an actual man, it's something else. Well, when, when I was growing up, I mean, I don't, I don't know. The way, I never really had, like, people 
like, I don't know, I was kind of, I learned about sex, you know, had the sex ed and everything, so I learned about it, you know, and my mom would tell me stuff about things or whatever, so, you know, my mom was very serious about telling me about stuff, you know, you know, like, you know, stuff my mom would tell me, like, about stuff, my mom was realistic about it, she didn't really hide anything about anything, you know, um, and, you know, my mom thought, like, I think at my age when I, you know, said, like, told my mom that I lost my virginity, I think she figured it was about time that I did, and it was good that I was an adult when I did it um, and stuff. So she was okay with it. Um, and it wasn't anything that was bad or whatever about it. Um, um, now, as to, like, our, like, relationships with families, like, Basically, with his family, you know, I don't really get along with his family. And, you know what, I don't really care if I do. Um, I try to be nice, but his family, they're just, they just have their own specific way about them. I guess they thought that I was going to be with him for, um, I guess they thought that I was going to be with him for, um, you know, like maybe a little while it was going to work out and stuff because I think they had plans for what they wanted him to do or whatever or something um, relationship-wise. I thought they were going to be way nicer because, you know, they were Jehovah's Witnesses. They were Christian in some way, you know, or believed in God and Jesus and all this stuff. So I thought that, you know, they was going to be totally nice. You know, that's how I always envisioned them when I, before I, I lived with them, uh, custody-wise. Okay, you, you don't have to go into, the, like, the whole thing but with the custody thing or anything. Oh, yeah. Um, but the thing is, is that, like, um, so he expected that. Um, with my family, I think with me getting a, a boyfriend, I think that, I, you know, people seem very welcoming in my family. Um, now, my immediate family, with my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, it seemed like they were kind of, not sure, especially when I was, I would drive my car all the way down to see him and spend a lot of time with him and stuff. I guess this was new to them, um, or whatever. And, you know, they didn't seem to like that, you know, but once they warmed up to him, then it was better, you know, type of thing. But, you know, um, I guess they didn't know how to think about it, you know, but, you know, I mean, I told my parents, like, I was like, well, you know, like when I was, interested in somebody or whatever when I told them I was just serious about it you know I wasn't like adding anything or anything um but you know everybody's you know my, my mom my dad my brother my sister they're they're cool with our relationship and stuff so it's not a big thing um now and stuff um and you know we're years older anyway now so it's not a big thing um so um Living together, I would say, and to talk about it, um, yes, there's a lot of people who are Christian who would say, well, how dare you, whatever. Um, well, I think that, you know, living together is fine. You get a chance to learn about the person and, you know, really get a feel for who they are when you live with them. I mean, when you're dating somebody, it's easy to show up and look a certain way, you know, for the guy to look all not you know all handsome and everything the girl to look all you know her her all done up and her clothes all you know cute and everything the guy look all handsome and everything his clothes whatever it's easy to do that on a date and it always seems to be perfect but when it comes to you know living together that's different because you see the person on the everyday basis and so there's not things you can hide from them. not saying i was trying to hide anything but you know we found out things about each other i found out that you know and one you know um, like he likes to play, you know, he likes music, you know, um, he likes to play video games and stuff like that. That's his thing. You know, I mean, when I come over his house and see him, you know, or his mom's house and see him and stuff, you know, I didn't really know that much about him, you know, uh, as much, you know, I'm only seeing, you know, the, like the, you know, the surface, you know, not below the surface type of thing, um, about who he is as a person. Uh, I would say the first year that we lived together, um, First, it seemed to start off easy, but it kind of went downhill from there. Um, because, you know, at first, I, I was excited about living together um, because, I mean, that means, you know, we got a chance to, you know, be intimate with each other or, 
you know, have sex with each other um, and stuff like that. But then I was also going to school at the time. So, you know, a lot of my focus went on school. Yep. And he can tell you um, that I will be spending a lot more time with the books than I will be spending with him. So, yep. yeah. The only um, time she spends time with me when she say, hey, I got to get this DVD. Could you buy it for me? Hey, I got to get this book. Could you buy it for me? Hey, I got to get this. Supplies, could you buy it for me? And I'd be like, All right, I got you. I got you. I got you. But then I come to, hey, uh, you know, can I get a smooch? No. Nope. Can I get a hug? No. Nope. <laughs> so, um, so basically, um, me, what would you say the first year was like? Because I think at first year, it, it started off okay. I think it started off okay. Terrible. But we, we, it's, it was terrible. The first, the first two years, was the worst. I mean, the fights were so bad. Okay. Like okay, if we we're going to say disagreements, not like fist fights or anything well, like it that. Wasn't it was a... disagreements. Okay. It was arguments. Yeah. It wasn't a fist fight. It was more like a throw something at you and then that's it. Or a push and that's it. But for me, you know, I wasn't very strong. Like I said, I still had that woman brain. Um, it took a long, I didn't have backbone either, so like, she would like make me cry, cause I would cause like, why ain't this shit working? Like, why can't I cheer her up? Or why isn't giving her gifts working? What, what the heck, what's going on? Well, <clears throat> you know, all that, all these different things and the cleaning and stuff. And, you know, the praying ain't working, the church ain't working. I was, God, Well, the, the church didn't even really, they didn't really want us to be together anyway. Every time you went to it. Like it's all like when you went to the different churches, like when you went to the church with your family and stuff, and then like the churches that you end up going to, like they never end up liking us being together exactly. Like they just like they're more about you giving money to them rather than like mm -hmm. you having me having money, you know, mm -hmm. having out money or whatever. Yeah. Luckily, now one time uh, he was going to this church. It was that black church he was yep. going to. Yep. And what happened was is that I, uh, what was, what happened? Oh, they said, oh, you know, uh, God don't like y'all being together. So, uh, because I wasn't giving to their church because I was giving money to her. And they was like, oh, God don't like y'all being together. So, you know, you need, you need to stop giving money to her and start giving more to the church. And you start giving more to God. It's God's money. So, <laughs> I was like, so I was I'm like. I'm sorry, that's <laughs> so funny. I was like, uh. What? Is see you later. And that's all I just left, you know, because I had to leave to go see her, like Scott Trade Center or something like that. And she came there to meet me. But then that night, like that night, her, her house got broken into and her laptop got stolen yeah. and all type of crazy stuff. And I was like, dang, like that could have been you dead if I had to listen to the church people. Like, that's not good. Yeah. And so, like, <laughs> that would not have went very well. Um, it, it really wouldn't have. Um I was really torn up about that laptop. I really was. I'm not really torn up about it now. But, I mean, I could, I've could. i gotten had other, like, laptops since then. So, it's not, like, like the only thing now that I think about. But I would say that, you know, at the time, it was really something really big and stuff. When somebody takes from you and stuff and you, you, you feel violated almost that something that you bought is taken from you and stuff. Um, so, and that stayed with me for a long time. Um, I guess right now, like, where am I going with this? Um, I think living together, like, the first two years, um, it, it's, I thought it was okay starting off when we, like, we were first getting stuff together, you know, um, like, I got my first check, we was able to get, um, food and stuff. To me, it was, we were first okay. Um, but yeah, we did have some disagreements, um, and stuff like that. And, you know, I mean, at least that's something we, we dealt with, you know? Um, if I, if we would have did, if we would have got married first, I would have divorced. I couldn't, I couldn't handle all that, especially actually trying to figure it out and then getting, you know, told I don't know a lot. It's very hard to figure that out, figure things out if the person doesn't even know why they're doing it or why they're treating it that way you know <clears throat> so I would have just divorced you know because things can only get so bad before you just call it quits you know but 
I mean, we we got um, the third year. We ended up getting in. We became engaged tonight to think the third year or something like. Yeah. Third year, yeah. So, so I, the third year we ended up getting engaged, I think. Yeah, third year. You know, it was like uh, now this is where my my male brain started to become active. Uh, so where I started really taking on. Well, you engaged me uh, first, me. and then. Yeah, because it was like it happened like this. I'm like, well, how did engage happen? What y'all? I'll tell you, I happened. So basically, she was upset. She figured we've been together long enough. And she started seeing a lot of girls on Facebook getting married, and this was all up in her face all the time. Always reminding her about, you know, what about, what about me? You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. So she was like, you know, she kind of went to the door and she was like, either you're going to get, either you're going to marry me or engage me, or somebody else will. She said, boom, and slammed the door. And I was like, oh, shit. I haven't tried everything yet. You know, in a relationship, there's still stuff I can work on. Like, I ain't tried counseling yet. I ain't tried, I ain't asked all the questions yet. I know there's more. I can do. So I was like, okay, so to prevent her from leaving, I'm going to just engage her. So I did it on the wrong terms. I wasn't even on the right terms of doing so. But well, that's how it happened. So and, we're, we still are engaged at this point. But yeah. So the thing is, is that it, um, the reason I felt that way is because, um, so I felt like that because, I don't know, I just repeat myself, because like, so my grandma, for example, my grandma, um, she's passed, um, and um, basically what happened is that my grandma, um, for a lot of years in her life, because she was married, but then um, the husband she had um, that gave her nine kids left her, deserted her for somebody else, well, he ends up dying from something in the hospital or whatever. I think it was frostbite or something. Um, and uh, so <clears throat> so my grandma would talk about the fact uh, to me when I was a kid. She talked to me and she was like, well, you know, about this guy named Wilson that she, you know, really liked and stuff or whatever. And she was always, like, waiting on him to marry her and everything like that because he said he would for years. He said this. So, you know, and I was like, wow, you know, I don't want to be like that. So when I, you know, me and anyone would, you know, been together and stuff or whatever, and I said, you know, if you don't engage with somebody else, well, I was, I was saying that, yes, I was seeing people on, you know, Facebook get married. Yeah, I've seen a couple of friends get married and stuff. Yeah, I did. Um, so, you know, yeah, I felt like I was fit to, you know, get married and everything. So, um, you know, and I was thinking about my grandma, how my grandma waited all these years, you know, waited these decades and she still didn't get married. And this guy was telling her that he was going to marry her. So I didn't want to end up like that, you know. So learning from my grandma's example, what I did is I said, OK, well, we're going to have to do something because I'm not going to end up doing that. You know, I'm a good enough woman that, you know, I deserve to be married. And stuff like that, and that's just the way I felt about it, you know, because I didn't want to, you know, part of it was I didn't, you know, want to keep going with it, you know, our relationship, because I wanted to define where we were going. That's what I wanted to do. Um, and so I felt like, okay, if we're going towards marriage, you know, I kind of want to cement that and know if we're going towards marriage, you know. And so, you know, yeah, I said that, and yeah, I got engaged. Um, would I redo the engagement? No, not really. Um, since then, I've grown, so I think that I, I you know, I, I could see why I felt the way that I did, you know, because nobody likes to be left out and not feel like they're valued and stuff. Also, I wanted to, um, I felt like, you know, there was no harm in marriage, you know. Uh, my parents were married. Of course, their marriage didn't go the way that, that it should have, you know. My mom was a good wife, but... Um, well, it didn't work out with my dad like that. They still are, you know, good parents. Uh, it's just the aspect of, you know, it just did not work out and stuff. And I'm not going to detail about that. But, um, you know, yeah, I mean, this is kind of where I'm coming from. And one, his, his mom and dad were married, um, but theirs didn't really work out and stuff. And so, you know, we're both basically 
kids trying to figure out what to do, you know, and when you, you learn from your parents, you learn from what they do so you don't make, you know, the mistakes that they did. Well, people say the same mistakes they did. You don't make those. So, you know, for Anwan, it's very important, you know, that he didn't make that mistake um, the same as, you know, his parents did. Well, what was it that, um, about marriage that you feel? For me, I saw it with my dad and stepmom, um, the woman that he married. So, he married her. <clears throat> And well, he married your mom first, though. He married my mom first, but I was really young then, and they divorced um, when I was older. Like, finally got a divorce when I was older, but they have been split. But my dad had already remarried another woman, which was my mom's uh, bully, which was another woman. Anyway, so what was important for me was to... Well, I, well, I observed how marriage to be was my dad, who's a grown man, Okay, who grounds his own children, grounds his kids, disciplines them. Why is it that when he goes buys things, all of a sudden it's his wife's? It's his she, wife's it's, stuff. It's his wife's stuff. Like she'll like he buys stuff she doesn't even use. His fishing poles, his boat. She don't go fishing. You know, he like the a TV or a music or a, a music player that she doesn't even listen to music like. She didn't even use that. You know, she says, go clean off my fishing poles. Go clean off, you know, go do some, uh, clean my boat. You know, go, uh, go wipe off my okay, tips. You know, and it was like, she kept saying everything was hers. And then he would do it. But then he wouldn't really do it. He would just make some stuff up, ground me and my sister in to make us do it. And then I was like, is this, is that, is that how marriage is? I'm like, you a grown ass man. Tell her to clean her own stuff. Like, you got your stuff, okay, you'll get to it when you when you get to it. The house is clean. Like me and my sister, we doing chores all the time. So the place is clean. I don't know what's what the problem is. <clears throat> no, so that was like, hell no. That's that's marriage? No, nah, yeah. no, hell no. I'm not doing that. Like, cause so I took it hard seriously. Also because I was Christian too. So I because I knew that once you get married, the only way to get out of it through God, through, you know, Jesus and everything, is in the Bible, is if you catch her cheating on you. She can hit you, slap you, beat you, a whole thing. The only way you can ever get out of marriage in God's eyes is if she cheats on you, or you okay. cheat on her. That's it. So, I took it hard, extreme hard seriousness, which is why afterwards, uh, we got into fights and kind of, I, I thought it to feel lower than even a boyfriend, so I ended up taking the ring away because I felt so low, you know. So I was like, you know, since I don't even feel, I don't even feel close to a, a, a fiance. I don't even feel. I feel even lower than a boyfriend. So, you know, I need the ring back until I start feeling that love connection or that that uh, what you call that that chemistry of where I actually feel like a fiance. Then I give me the ring back, <clears throat> which I got from Savorsky. It was it was cool. Um, Eventually, I did give it a ring back. And I was like, you know, I really don't know jack squat about marriage. Well, so I got to do all this research. Well, so when I started doing all this research, this is when I started getting into a different switch. Like, uh, you know, during an argument, I would realize something is happening. Like, uh, I would get caught in the argument, and I would forget what the hell the argument was about. I would just get caught in whatever she would bring up. Mm -hmm. And so I started really thinking about that, like, mm -hmm. okay, what the hell is this? You know, why? What? What? What is this about? Once I started doing that, you know, we still kind of off and on had arguments, but I was figuring stuff out. It, you know, stuff didn't really get better until I got out of Christianity. <laughs> to yeah, be honest with you, it became spiritual. Where is the ring anyway? <clears throat> I think it's in the closet. Yes, yeah, I closet. don't wear my. I really don't wear the ring very much. But I guess you should look at the ring anyway because. We're talking about marriage, so there's a lot of people who probably never seen my ring before. Family members have probably never seen it before, so they know why I like have an engagement ring or something. Um, it'll be just like a second. He'll be back in a second with the ring and stuff. I'm looking at our gerbil. <laughs> she was looking at me, so. 
Um, what? He does little cute little things like that. <laughs> he, he do, he do little cute little things like that with the uh, stuff. Um, so, I'll go ahead and, uh, All right, back. Why do you got the bear? So you can put it back in it. Say hi. <laughs> so I'll show you guys the ring. So um, I don't know. What? What is the bear doing? I like you. And one, I'm trying to show them the ring. <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead. I'm just playing. I'm gonna get on my nerves with that. What? See, do not stings. Somehow it gets on You nerves. see, yeah, but I'm trying to do something. You know I'm trying to do something. And now I'm trying to show the ring, and then what? A little bit of love. Anyway. I don't even know why you brought the bear for. I think I know why you brought the bear for, but I'm not going to talk about why you brought the bear. So, so, um... Is the bear going to make any more movements in this video? <laughs> no. Just Did not. we have to put the bear over there? <laughs> no, just put the ring. To the end of the video? Just put it back in the, uh, in the box. I didn't even show them the ring yet. Well, go ahead. I didn't say to put it back so, in right this is the So, um, this is the ring right here um, that, I, um, that I have or whatever. I'll put it on and stuff. So, okay, that's the wrong finger. I think it's the wrong finger. I think when he engaged me, he put it on the wrong finger or something. Um, so I'm trying to make sure I can get it real good um, for you guys so you can see it. Okay, so um, so this is um, my ring or whatever that he got me. I think you're supposed to put it on a different finger or something. Yeah, I think the finger that I was supposed to put on is to is well, it fits on this one. So this is um, my ring or whatever that I have and stuff. You know, look pretty, I guess, or whatever. So that's, you know, cute. Um, so basically, um, so it's my ring right there. So I have that little girl, you know, type of, you know, showcase ring or whatever. So, um... So, it's my engagement ring, and, um, right here, my engagement ring, um, and, um, I keep it in a box, I don't wear it, you know, because for me, I've had a bad thing where I don't, um, keep up with rings, and I lose rings, so I like to keep my ring in a box and stuff that way I don't lose it and this my ring was like a hundred dollars or whatever um and stuff it's never pretty my ring was like a hundred dollars so um you know I didn't want to lose it or anything it was exactly a hundred dollars plus tax um and it was the crystal ring and um so I um like to keep it somewhere where I'm gonna be able to look at it when I want to and work when I feel like I want to and stuff. I wear it on, you know, little rare occasions. <sighs> hey, Anwan, where'd you go? Anwan? I gotta go to the bathroom right quick. This will be the time where he would, you know, say that. Anyway, um, so, yes, I did get engaged. Um, I did contribute and force the engagement but you know I I honestly felt like at the time it was right for me to do that and stuff and um, I think that I've grown since then as a woman um, and yes we argue yeah he did take the ring uh, from me when he took the ring um, yeah I think when he took the ring, we were kind of at a point where it was necessary to do, you know, for us to think about whether we wanted to be together or not. 
Um, so I think that that was justified to do that, you know, for a while. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, when you're considering being with somebody and, you know, like I said, the like he said, the first two years were, you know, not very good. To me, it was okay, you know. But, you know, I guess it depends on the perspective and how you see it, you know. Um, so, at this point right now, um, I am engaged. Um, I do have the ring. Um, and do I, my honest thing about being engaged right now, I'm kind of waiting on him for a minute. Um, because, you know, he's the lucky guy or whatever, so. And one. I'm up for waiting on him and everything. He never does this doing any other video where he has to go to the restroom. But. So, the thing about him taking the ring, I mean, I, the the thing about him taking the ring. I mean, how did you feel about me taking like how, about you taking the ring back? Like, what did you feel like about that? Cause like, I felt that maybe uh, you found somebody else, or you was thinking about somebody else, or it was time to take a break or split. So, I mean, it was it was a time like I said before, like that. You know, we had to think about that. Now a lot of people would say, well. Why don't we just split up? Why don't we just, you know, they'd ask me, well, why don't you just find another man and do the, you know, do something else, whatever. But, you know, I don't know why. I guess it's because we had been together for a while and I figured, okay, well, let's just see where it goes and stuff. Um, and so we continued and um, I was still in college at the time or whatever. And, um... I think, what, what time was this around? It was after that. And um, what had happened was I found out, when was it? Do you remember when it was? The um, the thing that happened? Oh, when I was in college. So I was in my senior college. And um, I found out in my senior college, it was, we had went to his friend's, um, New Year's Eve party. Hmm. Yeah, we went to Derek's New Year's Eve party. Oh, and that's then, right, that's right. Um, we went there and stuff or whatever. We didn't like the fact that they were shooting outside, so we kind of left early. Even the kids that was at the little New Year's party didn't like it either. The kids was hiding under the couches and everything. So his friend Derek lived like further away from where we do now and stuff, but we went over there and stuff. We came back home, whatever. At the New Year's Eve party, whatever. Um, and um, a few weeks after that, I found out something. What What did I find out? I don't know. After After his party? I don't remember. Yes, you do. What did you find out? I don't know. You do, because you found out too. About the positive pregnancy test? Yeah. Oh. That one. Yeah, so I found out that I was pregnant. Um, in my, um, it was my senior year of college. And, yeah, I was pregnant. And, um, a lot of people are going to be blown away. Oh, my gosh, you're pregnant? What? Why don't you tell anybody? Whatever. Well, the reason why I didn't tell anybody was because I knew people in my family. I already knew that they were going to be the types to go and basically try to force me down the aisle type of stuff because of me being pregnant. So, I didn't tell anybody about it. I didn't tell anybody. Not until, like, right now. Um, and, um... You know, no, you don't see the kids running around right now. Of course not. Um, with that, um, my decision, I made my decision when I found out I was pregnant. And I wanted to look at my future and think about what I wanted to do. Because I was told that 
when you go to college, when you graduate from college, you're going to have a great job and, you know, you know, all the opportunities and doors will open up to you and you'll have this great life and everything. And this is what I've been told from college, high school, you know, everywhere. I was told this. So, you know, I wanted to, you know, make an impression on my family like, you know, I was successful. So, um, I basically decided that um, that was more important. And, you know, seeming good to my family, you know, seeming, um, not even seeming, but making it, you know, making myself be successful and seem right was better than it was, you know, for to have a child. So, um, what I decided to do was is that um, I decided to get an abortion. Um, a lot of people are going to be like, what? You decided to get an abortion? Why would you do that? You know, that's murder, blah, blah, blah. Well, no, it's not. Um, it's not because it would have been worse for me to have a child and bring a child into an unsafe world as it was. Besides, luckily I did what I did with an abortion because if I did not um, get the procedure done, then, um, well, um, I would have been, my life would have been threatened, my child's life would have been threatened because um, after the abortion, what happened was is that police officers started tasing women in the stomach, um, black women in particular, uh, trying to make them lose their babies and stuff. Black men were getting shot, you know, black women were getting shot, black children were getting killed, and, you know, it was stuff like that. So, you know, luckily I did do that, you know, and I did take that step to do that, you know, and, you know, I listened to my gut feeling that I had, you know, and I followed it, and it was good that I did do it. Um, yeah, I graduated from college, of course. The whole job thing, opportunities didn't materialize like that, like people said, you know. So, you know, I just, I've kept going ever since. Now, you might say, well, how can you get a job, you know, how is that possible? Well, you know, we tried a lot of different things. We went to churches, you know, we went to this church, the church prayed for me to get a job. Several times that didn't work. We would, you know, pray in the living room with our hands joined together with the Bible between us. And we pray at the dinner table for me to get a job. And it never did anything, you know. And that contributed to me, you know, not being a Christian. Um, and so, you know, I mean, yeah, it is, it is what it is. You know, it's, it's a big contributing factor, you know. To why I'm not, you know, a Christian at this point, um, and so I'm glad I found it out at that point, you know. Um, since those two first two years, I mean, we have grown. He's grown more to have a more of a male brain. Me, I have more. So I would say this: something I started to do um, is something that really helped me was. Getting out of Christianity did help me, um, and it was something where after I left Christianity, and we both left Christianity, then things started to get better in our relationship, surprisingly. Um, I started meditating, and, you know, it helped me to contemplate and to think about things in my life, and to see things in a new way, in a new perspective, and to deal with things inside of myself that, uh that needs to be dealt with, you know, especially because I was adapting to the fact of there being a new president. It was scaring me to death because of, you know, the stuff that's being said where the black people's lives were in danger and, you know, all the stuff like that. So with, you know, Donald Trump becoming president and, you know, his white supremacy stuff and being scared for my life and stuff. And meditation really helped me to the point where, you know, it, it helped me to overcome things. Um, and, you know, another thing that may help me out was the fact of, I started to observe our arguments too, uh, to see what was going on. And, um, I started to notice certain things, um, and to really pay attention to things, um, that was going on, like what we argued about and different stuff or whatever. Um, we did try, um, premarital counseling, where we paid for premarital counseling, 
and stuff that really opened us up. That ain't okay. That didn't open us up when we paid for premarital counseling. We paid for secular premarital counseling, and that didn't do anything. It's like we threw money down a throw it out the window, or threw it down the toilet. It really do nothing for the lady we went and met with and stuff. We paid three hundred or four hundred dollars to be with her and stuff. It didn't really do nothing. But when we found um, the five, we read the five love languages book and uh, and did the prologue. A test online. Um, Prologue was a premarital, basically, uh, site that really helped. The guy who wrote Five Love Languages came with Prologue and stuff for people to take tests and stuff. And it really opens up your perspective um, about what the two of you want. If you're going to get married, the things you guys have to be aware of and stuff like that. And so um, we took the test and um, Anwan gave his honest opinion on his time. I did the test on my t my side of the test. He did his side of the test. Hello. Well, um, when it was time for us to reveal our answers about certain things, we had to face those things. Um, but this was before we left Christianity and stuff like that. Um, it really was and stuff. Um, one thing I've I've had to adapt to, and this is before um, I left first and everything, was the fact that he didn't want kids. And I had to, you know, realize that if I was going to be with him, then, you know, there wasn't going to be any kids in our relationship. And so um, that was something I spent a lot of time thinking about, um, you know, contemplating the marriage thing and everything. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I decided that that was, you know, kids weren't the most important thing to me, you know. Um, it's, it's more about, you know, my relationship is more important. Because my mom spoke to me, and uh, I was having a conversation with my mom, and I was telling my mom about the fact that he didn't want kids, you know, and or whatever. And he has his reasons for why not. Um, and so um, I spoke to my mom about it. And my mom said, well, Michelle, you know, you got to think about this. She said, you know, are you okay with, you know, she said, it's either one or two things. She's like, well, you, you have to decide whether, you know, kids is something that you, you know, whether you want to be with somebody who, you know, and go off with, you know, find a relationship with somebody who you want kids with or, or you know, you want to be with him. You know, she said, you know, do you really want to, in a relationship because you don't want kids. You know, you don't have to have kids in a relationship. You know, she said, well, I did, you know, but, you know, the thing is, is are you willing to give up a relationship just because he doesn't want kids? And my mom just put it to me squirrely like that. And, you know, my mom, sometimes my mom just makes a point, you know, and she just puts it down the wire. And I was like, you know, no, I'm not willing to do that. You know, I'm not willing to end my relationship because he doesn't want kids, you know. I'm not willing to do that. Um, and for those of you who don't know, he doesn't want kids because Anwan's been through uh, abuse, a lot, years of abuse um, as a kid. And he doesn't want any other, you know, he doesn't want to bring any kids into the world to have to deal with anything like that. You know, because of what he's seen during his childhood, he just doesn't want any child to experience that. And so, you know, I I understand that coming from that, I don't can't understand his experience as a child, but um, I can understand why you know he wants to take the responsibility to make sure no child has to go through what he did. And so I I understand that now. You know, as as I've learned more and more about him and his childhood and what he's gone through, then I've, you know, become more accepting of, you know, not having children, then bring them into this world and stuff like that. So, you know, um, I've had other things to contemplate too, but leaving Christianity really was helpful though, really, because it, it took us away from having to deal with these pre-made um, rules of stuff that you have to do because the church wants you to do it and stuff or whatever. Um, because there's, there's people who are religious who they, it, it's really about what they want you to do. You know, it's not about what you want to do. You know, I've seen people that have been forced 
to get married because of their parent. Um, and it's about what their parent wanted them to do, not what they wanted to do. You know, I've seen other people who got married because, you know, they really wanted to, you know, and that was good um, and stuff. And, you know, I've heard people's perspectives of, oh, if you're together for, oh, if you're together for three months, then, you know, you should get married. You know, I heard that from someone when I was attending a wedding of a friend of mine, you know. So, I mean, you know, I think out here there's, you know, there's more likely people getting married more so, you know, people get married for, some people are selfish because they, you know, some people just want to get married because they want to have a baby or they, they have a baby and they want to make it right. You know, some people want to just get married because they just want to tear their clothes off. So they want to hurry up and jump in a, you know, jump into a marriage and then it's made right or something. But that doesn't do good because they haven't lived together, you know. So, yeah, it's not very good, you know, in that regard. 